So um, I am Michael Bowles of the um, Association for the Wolf Lake Initiative. Um, I met revisited and um, um, for, um, I am co-host with Valerie Penninen, Professor Emerita of History at Kinda College. The forum is funded in part by the Indiana Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Before um, we hear um, the um, announcements, um, are there any announcements that, that you may have? If not, I have several. Ollie's 23rd Winter Wonderland at Wolf Lake will be held Saturday morning, January 13th as a tree identification walk at Eggers Grove. Uh, two days earlier, Ollie will uh, conduct its annual membership meeting at Calumet College. Uh, the presentation this evening is being recorded. Uh, would everyone please remain on mute? Um, and the discussion tonight will center around um, the use of hydrogen to reduce uh, local industries' carbon footprint. Um, this evening, um, I'm going to turn this over to Bill Emerson, and um, he'll show us a uh, a gathering where uh, this was discussed. Um, Bill, do you want to start that? Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Michael. Um, uh, thanks for having me tonight. And just by way of background, I'm the Lake County Surveyor. Um, and I'm also, uh, my background's in environmental uh, science, weight and water resources. So uh, I'm also the uh, Environmental Management Policy uh, Committee President at NERPC. And I was invited to a uh, public forum and a, and a kind of elected official uh, forum by BP to go over their carbon sequestration uh, initiative that they're uh, that they're doing and and if you haven't heard of it um, and or seen anything about it basically it's uh, what they're doing is taking uh, natural gas that is normally used in the refining process and uh, taking out the carbon uh, carbon dioxide and breaking it off the hydrogen uh in the in the um, natural gas and then using the hydrogen to burn for energy and taking the carbon dioxide that's broken off of that liquefying it and injecting it underground is what they plan on doing so that's the plan that they want to do but since i'm not an expert in that uh, i wanted to uh, play the video of the uh bp representative at NERPC that came to speak to us so let me get that going and then we can we can discuss that after it is a 20 minute video so uh, strap in but um, it, it's, it's, it is good here. And hopefully you'll be able to hear the audio. Let me know if you don't hear it for some reason. Bill, I don't hear the audio. Uh oh. You guys can't hear it? I, no. Hmm. <laughs> and Matt Kaplan can't hear it either. <laughs> um, you know, Well, I was hoping you could hear it. Okay. Um, Let's see here. I'm not. Still, well, let's see if I can play with this for a second. Well, let me hit share screen, see if that helps. No, I, can't. I guess it's just sharing my screen and not my audio for some reason. Shoot. 
Well, that's not going to work, huh? Um, okay. No, no one can hear the audio. Um, if we can't hear the audio. Yeah, it's not, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that to work. Okay. If we can't hear the audio, then um, let's just uh, talk about it. Let's uh, have people who uh, have questions about it. Maybe we can um, record all the questions we have. And then when we get somebody to, to come in person, then we'll have something to, uh, we'll have a, a question. Yeah, that, that's, that sounds good. And look, I can put the link to that video in the chat too for everybody. Okay, yes. Um, and you could maybe you can get all the information there um, as well if I can pull that up. But um, here we go, and that'll take you that'll take you right to the beginning of their presentation, so you guys can all watch that. And um, so, but basically, like I said, that is that is the plan. So um, the actual things you don't agree with it's the actual uh, injection. Of the liquid liquefied uh, carbon dioxide. Oh, I think we got somebody's mic off. Who disagree? That you would and, not agree. Let everybody remain on mute except for Bill. This doesn't mean you don't agree. You don't agree with and so uh, the uh, that is that is kind of what, what the plan is. So it's keep keep the carbon dioxide and the uh, which is a greenhouse gas out of the atmosphere and store it underground. So there are some concerns about that from the folks down uh, where it's gonna be stored. So the plan that they have, and again, I wanna be clear, I'm not a spokesman for you know the project. I'm not affiliated with BP, I'm the elected county surveyor, but um, I found it to be kind of something that people might be interested in. So um, the plan is to create a pipeline uh, to carry the liquefied uh, carbon dioxide down to the county south of us, uh, Benton County, Jasper County, and I believe Newton County has the subsurface uh, uh, geological formations that can accept this liquefied carbon dioxide deep down. I want to say, I believe it's three or 4,000 feet underground. Um, so it's well below uh, the groundwater table. Um, there's this sandstone uh, that that is a geological formation down there that's taxpayer, able to accept it. Taxpayer, taxpayers. Yeah, I think we might need to mute there, sir. Uh, I think Michael, you could mute people if they don't, they're not able to. Hold on. Um, oh, thank you. And so, um, so that that's what they're proposing. I know that the federal government has quite a bit of money uh, set aside for it. And so, well, one of the things we do at NERFC too is we we've done a, a greenhouse gas inventory for the region, and when you look at when you look at the greenhouse gases coming out of this region, obviously the, the, the bulk of it is from, from industrial. So um, reducing those greenhouse gases uh, will take a huge, huge amount of, uh, huge amount of our greenhouse gases uh, uh, away. Uh, so we, we look at ways that we as citizens and government can reduce our greenhouse gas output, but really the industrial uh, greenhouse gas output is really the main source for this region. So um, that's that's the general. Those are the general uh, broad strokes. I mean, the the big concern that we have in Lake County, um, and again, I don't regulate this. This is all IDEM and uh, state regulatory agencies. But like one concern that I have on itself and safety of that pipeline, because that's really going to be the main 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 thing that comes through Lake County. So uh, we we had a lot of discussions about that, and we voiced our concerns, my personal concerns about that. Um, there was down in, I believe, in Mississippi, there was a pipeline break. Um, I think that involved a, um, a mudslide that, that damaged the pipeline, and some, a lot of folks were injured uh, with that. Um, so, you know, pipeline safety, that's true with all the pipelines that we have in, in Lake County. We want, we want to make sure that they're safe, but um, that's, that's a big concern we have in Lake County. Of course, there's, also, there's some opposition to, to the project down in these, the southern counties. They're concerned about, uh, you know, injecting that volume down on the ground, but um, those, I'm not an expert in that, so I can't, I can't really say, but um, I wanted to, you know, make this group aware of it. And Michael was kind enough to reach out um, and, and, and to uh, ask me to be here. So um, 
I, I'll, I'll answer any questions I can, but a lot of those should be directed at someone for BP. And the gentleman who spoke at NERPC, I reached out to have him come, but I, I think with the holidays, it was hard to coordinate with their their uh, processes that they have to do for people to come out and speak. So hopefully either another date or uh, hopefully they'll be able to be here to speak. Okay, I have just a couple of simple questions and I'm sure others uh, have other questions as well because I've talked to some of them about it. Terry, you're here, so um, maybe what are what's your questions, Terry? Beagle, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just wanted to, had to get everything un unmuted. Okay. Uh, big concern I have is, uh, you know, uh, BP and IPSCO are just out to make money uh, off of our backs, basically. You know, they, you know, they've they've both been bad environmental uh, community members as 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 we go here because NIPSCO has been horrible with their coal coal plants and the coal ash and the cleanup. Uh, BP's been a terrible uh, environmental neighbor with the pollution they've done, and if they really want to be an asset to the community here and bring some value, they need to make green hydrogen, which is made from renewable energy, uh, and and then that way you eliminate the uh, the the need for taking the uh, natural gas that you, it creates pollution and finding a way to carbon capture that that creates problems. So you know the best way is is the green car, uh, green hydrogen, uh, and they have access to that. They own the uh, the Fowler Ridge uh, wind farm down there in Benton County, uh, and then and also they could increase their capacity there because they they they've done some already. Uh, they took uh, forty of their windmills there and increased the capacity by changing the uh, uh, the, the uh, turbines there. Uh, and increase their capacity by 40% with those uh, 40 units, and they have 355. So what we need to do is decrease the pollution uh, in Northwest Indiana, not kind of create another monster. And, and doing it with the renewable energy would be the way to do this. And like I said, BP has the access to this. So our demand should be that they use the green hydrogen. You know, we don't need them creating another problem and there's also the issues with the uh, uh, CO2 pipelines because, uh, you know, if when they do rupture, they're dangerous because not only do they create a, a hazard to people, they even shut down emergency vehicles because, uh, you know, with no oxygen, the uh, uh, vehicles can't run. So, you know, there's too many issues that go along with that where they could be an asset to the community versus creating another liability. So we need to push them in that aspect of things and, and go in the right direction on the, uh, as far as the hydrogen plant. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and you know, we, we, we do have severe problems. You know, I mean, I'm a retired steel worker and the steel mills have to do a better job too. And uh, there's also uh, uh, on uh, January 10th at the East Chicago Central High School, there's a, there's a uh, IDEM has a hearing at 6 p.m. Uh, on the air permits for the uh, Cleveland Cliffs in East Chicago. And uh, the pollution that they omit is uh, something that needs to be focused on also. Uh, we need to try and, you know, narrow that down because, uh, you know, it, it not only creates problems for the environment, it also creates environments for poisoning the people. So uh, we just got to think a little bit different and we got to demand a little bit different because NIPSCO and BP are going for the cheap route. We're not looking for the cheap route. We're looking for the environmental route that's best for our community. And also, it, okay. it, it's, it's a way to uh, lower the footprint for integrated steel mills, and, and they need to be more focused on that, uh, which this would supply the hydrogen to the seven blast furnace at Cleveland Cliffs. So, you know, that, and that's an important factor, but we need that to be made from green hydrogen, not blue hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I've, I haven't looked into that, to be honest with you. I don't know what the process is for uh, creating hydrogen. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what that would look like as far as using. I'm not sure how that would work. I'm, I'm not a chemist. I don't understand uh, exactly all the ins and outs. So I, and I apologize. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I wish I would have had someone from BP for you guys here. But um, 
I'm not sure how that would work. Because I, because I, 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 my understanding is you would need, you would need some source originally, right, for the hydrogen. How, I'm not sure how that works, but. Um, well, that's yeah. where they can use the renewable energy to, to to create the green hydrogen. Okay. And there's there's where you know that's the difference. You got the you got renewable energy versus natural gas, and natural gas is another another where you create more CO2 emissions, and they have to capture that somehow at the mm -hmm. process of generating the uh, the hydrogen in that process. So then they have to do something with that. It would be a different process if you're using renewable energy. And there's where we got to get BP on board to use renewable energy. Okay. And, and, you know, it ain't the go cheap route. It's the go right route. Yeah. Well, that, those are good points, I think. Yeah. I, I was wondering uh, just what industry, um, what other industry besides steel uh, would would be interested in, um, say, green hydrogen? Uh, you know, the, the cement industry, uh, the aluminum industry. Uh, so there's there's several major uh, polluters that need to lower their footprint uh, that this would help. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think the plan is, at least right now, because one of my questions was, you know, if I were down in Benton County, obviously, I, or, you know, I care anyway, uh, even though I'm not down there, um, you know, what kind of impurities would be injected? Um, and they, you know, their plan right now is to do the natural gas. Uh, so it'd be straight, you know, carbon dioxide, but down the road, you know, I think the plan is also to scrub some of the towers, uh, you know, the, the, uh, stacks on, you know, either the mills or other, like you said, the cement in industry, um, creates a lot of CO2 for making cement. Um, and it would be to use processes that I don't fully understand, to be honest with you, to scrub that high, that carbon dioxide out of the stacks so that. That's what they were. That's what they were, they told me. So, and there's where the, the the farmers are concerned too, and I can understand that because, uh, you know, you can create a pipeline, which these are high pressure pipelines to to move this stuff, uh, and inject it on these farms. But then the problem they have is, you know, once you inject it down in those wells, you really have no control over what's going on down there. You know, I mean, years ago the. Uh, the steel mills used to have injection wells right on their property and injected pickle liquor right in the right on the property there down in, in the ground. Well, where does that all leach out to? And you know, and that then finally stopped that because that naturally after a period of time it's gonna leak leach out to Lake Michigan. So you kind of use the same concept. And like I said, and and the and the, the pipeline safety standards aren't aren't the best either. Uh and and then how do you how do you put these check valves in and 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 parameters that you know you're not going to wipe out a subdivision right and you know that those questions uh, you know they said and i and i know it, it's true that the pressure is down and they've been doing this for you know years and years decades with natural gas itself they, they store it down in these rock formations and the pressure is so great down there you know it doesn't it doesn't leave the that that layer and doesn't enter you know groundwater and things like that um but again, that's above my pay grade, and that's for people that do that type of stuff. And they they've been doing it and all around the world, you know, uh, successfully. Um, so that's that's what they would say, I think. Um, Matthew Kaplan has uh, stopped taking pictures and has a question: uh, What do you think? What do you know about the actual hydrogen facility at the Whiting refinery? Its footprint, location, content. I do not know exactly where they plan on doing that. Steve, do you know? Uh, Matt Kaplan comes back, same question, type better. What do you know about the actual hydrogen facility at Whiting refinery? It's footprint, location, contents. I think that's the same question. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know. Okay. 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 Lauren says green hydrogen is made from water. You use renewable energy to power an electrolyzer that produces hydrogen, and the byproduct is water vapor. 
Wow. Thanks, Lauren. That was good. Um, yeah, that, that would be a good question if we can get, you know, a representative on that, you know, whether they can do that at the scale that they need to do it for the industry here. Um, I would tend to agree that would be better. Okay. And Lauren says, um, also, I'm a newcomer here. I'm in Chicago and work for um, Yeah, I lost it. Also, I'm a newcomer here. I'm in Chicago and work for Earth Justice. Was invited by a colleague. Thanks for letting me join. All right, Blake. Good evening, gentlemen. I want to ask how we reduce pollution from BP to secure a brighter future in the county. Met. So that's a step. Separate issue. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes. Is the um, county getting any direct payments from in the scheme about transporting the carbon dioxide with the pipeline through Lake County? Is anything going directly to the county in terms of payment for that right of way over the years or some kind of a tolling on that or anything? I am not, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, there was discussion of that at the public meetings that every community that, that they pass through will get some sort of uh, fee. And I, I wasn't clear on it, but they did mention that. Excuse, excuse me, Bill. How, how are you? I, I'm good. How are you? Okay. I want to find out how can we convince BP to stop polluting in key in key in key ecosystems throughout the Calumet region to secure to to ensure a brighter future. Well, um, that that's a big question. Uh, I think um, it probably starts with um, talking to the state agencies that regulate directly regulate uh, those that industry um, and federal um, and get involved in some of the public meetings that way. Um, and talking to your elected officials who who make the laws uh, in that regard. Um, that's a big question. I mean, that, that goes even higher than the, the state level in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of those, uh, a lot of the pollutants are uh, regulated by uh, it federally too. So um, that's a good question. It's a good goal for sure. Are, 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 folks, are, for, are folks in Indiana aware of the, pollution and other environmental issues in the Calumet in terms of wildlife and people? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure I can answer that. Uh, I, I think I know they are. I mean, I, I believe they are. Um, but I think it's it's always good to keep raising those issues and making sure people keep it in the top of their mind. So I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. And I think it's uh, good that we're we're having other meetings on this subject um, in the area, and, and so we all can get smarter by uh, going to those meetings. Um, and um, and does any anyone else have a question? Okay, um, Terry, did you have some, something? Uh, yes. <clears throat> You know, I, I, you know, uh, Blake brought up about other problems. We do have prob other problems we could solve, okay? Uh, one of them is BP discharges about uh, 18 million gallons a day of uh, discharge into Lake Michigan. They have legal limits of, of toxic emissions they can, they can dump in the lake. So you go 18 million of those, of the lake, of those legal limits times, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, 365 days times 125 years, they've dumped a lot of stuff in the lake. And then you just go, you go over to the steel mills there, they dump about, uh, I think it's uh, 100 million gallons a day into the lake. They discharge, okay? And, and then if you look at these two sources, uh, they dump the, the toxic chemicals into the lake. Our water treatment plants suck that water up, and then, you know, we have to further purify it. So what we need to demand on the water discharge side 
is that they make purification plants at the source. And and then they could sell the water back to the municipalities or whatever, but it should be treated there, not dump it in the lake and then create all these environmental problems that we have to clean up later. Just look at the Indiana Harbor Ship Canal. They've been dumping in there so long and now we get, it's gotten so deep, they got to dig it out. And then on the north side of the Ship Canal in East Chicago there, they took the old ECI refinery to make a, a, a lined, uh, basically dump pit that you're trying to store this stuff in. I mean, when does it stop? I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're just poisoning ourselves. So we have to start stopping the problem at the source. That's that's what needs to happen. And the, and the only way it's gonna happen is the public go to these meetings and demand it. Uh, and, and like I said, there was a meeting back in, I think it was October, November in East Chicago on the water permits for uh, Cleveland Cliffs. And, and I am just gonna give them a rubber stamp now. I went to that hearing and there's only about seven people there that showed up to testify. And we do need our public officials to get more involved in, in this issue. And, and, and really we're depending on Mr. Emerson, especially with uh, you know the, the responsibility he has with the waterways. Uh, we need your help drastically. You know, it's just like the farm runoff and everything else. There should be retention before that stuff's able to go back into the ditches and start thinking about those retention ponds that have plants that purify the water. So there's a lot of things we could do if we just start using a little common sense and, and doing the right thing. So yeah. that's where we need to go. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I was uh, I was lucky uh, to be appointed to the drainage task force, the state drainage task force um, this past year. And it was, it, it was unfortunate, but I, I felt myself, I was one of the, one of the few that was saying, you know, these are, these are all of our resources. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just because you happen to have a plant on the lake or you have a, have a farm that has a, a huge footprint, um, the water that you use and the water that's discharged, that's, those are public resources and they need to be treated that way. Um, and l luckily some of the things that were proposed in the drainage task force, in my opinion, uh, did not go through as far as exempting agriculture from a lot of different regulation regulations. Th those, those were not, you know, those were not part of the drainage task force recommendations, um, in part because of uh, myself and folks like me who who made those arguments that you know there these are public resources and we need to be, be we need to be careful with them. I've got a another, just getting back to that pipeline, um, mm -hmm. surveyor. Do you know the route it's taking? They uh, they did not. How we, that is there, I mean, does the county regulate that in any way, or is it just some kind of eminent domain that comes down from Indianapolis? Well, th those are federal regulations on the pipelines. Um, Out of and, the so, and so um, we did ask uh, a couple times on, you know, any any idea of where they're going to be. The, the most we could get was generally it's probably, they're probably going to follow the old railroad lines where the old pipelines uh uh, where all the pipelines are. So th those are easy, easy to install. So, you know, we have a general idea where they're going to be, but we don't know exactly where. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And I, and I, my goal with bringing them to NERPSI was uh, to sort of, because a lot of communities just aren't aware of it, you know, and I want them to be aware of what might be coming and what, you know, you know, uh, you know, to, to be ready for it. So. And uh, they were they were happy to do it. And I think they would, could have been here. And, and hopefully we can schedule them to come in to this this group. I really think this group is, has a great set of uh, it's a great group. I think every time I've, I've done something with you guys, um, you have a lot of really smart people that show up and ask great questions as you're doing tonight. So it'd be nice to have them come to meet with you. PP too. Correct. I, I, I want to find out if there are any upcoming meetings to address some of our environmental issues, including water pollution, air pollution, and that sort of stuff. Anything upcoming? I don't know if anything upcoming. I'd have to look, but you just you gotta I stay mean, tuned. You gotta you gotta stay up on it because they they announce them and um, sometimes they're in the paper, sometimes they're not. Um, and you just want to make sure that you you know take keep an eye on mostly IDEM. IDEM has a lot of public meetings. Uh, uh, for for their projects and 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 they that's a good place to start. The Indiana Department of Environmental Management.
and 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 has and has the DNR gay has the DNR gay folks a chance to, to uh, give 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 folk give give folks a chance to comment on on some on some on some on some of the key economic projects before 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 stuff goes forward. Yes, they do. There are public comment periods on on the permits, um, and I'm I'm not quite an expert in all that. We don't. I don't always. Uh, we I know what they are in the drainage projects that we do, but um, yeah, you'd want to check the IDEM website. There are public comment periods on the on the environmental permits. And could and could and could folks? Oh, does Terry? Make, did you have something to add to that, Terry? Yeah, <clears throat> on uh, on January tenth. IDEM is having an air quality uh, meeting for the permits for Cleveland Cliffs in East Chicago. That's going to be at the uh, uh, East Chicago Central High School cafeteria at 6 p.m. On, on January 10th. And it's important people show up there and, and voice their opinions. On top of that, East Chicago is also an environmental justice community. So the steel mills have to be more cognizant of what they're doing. Uh, recently, Cleveland Cliffs, uh, they bought AK Steel up in Michigan uh, and in Dearborn there, they, they just got done completing a $100 million project uh, with precipitators and stuff to decrease the pollution uh, in that plant uh, that was uh, affecting the community. And they also spent $244,000 to buy air purifiers for people adjacent to the community there. So these have a direct impact on the community, but people need to show up so that IDEM doesn't rubber stamp all these things. And that's what they're doing. They've just done that with the water discharge permits for Cleveland Cliffs. And nobody's willing to come together as, and, and, and work on pollution solutions. This is what we gotta go for. We gotta quit putting our head in the sand until EPA's file suit against some company and it gets dragged out for five to 10 years and then they finally do something and it's too late. You know, we've already, we've already created a monster that you can't get cleaned up and they kind of go about it uh, in, a, in a spot check way with a bandaid. So it's, you know, people need to realize that. And the other thing we that with green hydrogen, you know, we don't have to have a pipeline and we don't create this, all this carbon. So BP can, has the availability you know, and they just spent a hundred million dollars to 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 improve forty turbines at their Fowler wind farm that increased capacity by forty percent. Now they have three hundred fifty five wind turbines in Fowler, so you know they have the capacity to increase their capacity to bring renewable energy to this hydrogen plant and not go to cheap way. It's going to create a bigger problem, a bigger environmental problem for the northern Indiana. So we I need wonder, to force them to go with the green hydrogen. And do you and know if, if that fears on it? Do you know if that was included in that that, that federal grant? Because I know that's part of that's a big reason why this is happening. So I don't know if that was included or not, but that would be a question, I guess, for them. They're they're trying to say that they're going to do a mixed use thing or whatever, but it should only be green hydrogen. We have the capacity to do it. And that's the most that's the most environmentally friendly way to do it. It's going to help decrease our footprint and not create another monster that we can't control. And that's what the problem you're going to have with these pipelines, because, you know, you can't guarantee the safety of the pipelines. If they're going to go through residential neighborhoods, it's a big problem. And then the other thing with is, is these farmers are justified too. that, you know, when you pump this stuff in the ground, how are you going to how do you, how do you guarantee you can control what's going to happen to it? after you pump it all down there. I mean, they don't know. All they, only thing they've said about that is if, if there's a problem, we'll fix it. Well, we know how that goes, you know? And, and you know, I, you know I've, I've got a little, little history in this area. You know, I, I grew up, uh, you know, two blocks away from the Grand Cay Mid Avenue, uh, or the, the, the Grand Cay Mid River, that's uh, uh, by the uh, sanitation district there in Hammond. You know, I, then, uh, you know, I worked in a steel mill and, uh, for 41 and a half years. And uh, you know, they, on the Indiana Harbor Ship Canal that never froze, and and then I uh, I live in Highland, and now we're, we're going to have to pay seventy million dollars uh, to fix a problem we, that the town fathers created with polluting Little Camet River. 
So we, we got to wake up on environmental issues and start doing the right things up front and, and stop polluting. Barry, could you, could you share your um, email with uh, those um, either through chat or those listening tonight? Because uh, Blake was was questioning, uh, you know, where the, where the meetings are, and you uh, you keep up with that fairly well. Would you mind? I'll, I'll put I'll put my email in, in the in the in the chat. Okay, great. Because I, I, I learned a lot from Perry from, and um, we've never met before and, and I had, um, but uh, he, he uh, sends out a lot of information that, um, that uh, helps me. And yeah, and it can be hard to keep up. I mean, there's constantly different permits, you know, coming up and, and, and notices. So um, it, it can be, it can be difficult. Um, on that score, could you, Terry, repeat one more time the day and the, the information about that upcoming meeting? Yes, that's uh, that's going to be January 10th at 6 p.m. at the East Chicago Central High School cafeteria, and and that's on the uh, water uh, the air permits for the uh, Cleveland Cliffs uh, uh, facility there. Great, thank you. Also, uh, you know, they're getting away from publishing stuff and they, they, I think they passed a law where they don't have to publish it in the paper anymore either. So if you wanna get notifications on, on this stuff too, you have to sign up with IDEM to get notifications is another thing. Because they don't publish it in the paper anymore. Uh, they did away with that when they passed, uh, they passed the law, I think uh, last year or the year before where they, they were able to eliminate publishing in the paper. Why 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 they do that? That's 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 a that's a that's a crime and a huge disservice to the public, not just in Indiana, but over here in Illinois in terms of environmental issues and stuff. And it affects the Calumet region as a whole. Yeah, that doesn't help newspapers either. Yeah, you would think their lot the newspaper lobby would have stopped that. <laughs> I would, I, I would have, I would have been uh, because really, it's even even when it does appear in newspapers, it's difficult to to, to read to find it, and yeah. uh, you have to have friends that that read the newspaper better than you do, I guess. <laughs> But it, but it's all in sharing information, and um, um, that's the best way to learn. And so this is what we were trying to do tonight. And even though we didn't have the audio, um, uh, we had Terry. Yeah. And so <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I thought it would I thought it would transmit to the to the Zoom. But you guys can click on that link and and get probably more a lot a lot of information on that and um yeah. you know and there's been some good articles on the on the on the process as well it was just it was when the when the article article started coming out and everything i it was a whole a totally new process to me i'd never heard of it um and so i try to stay in tune with things so i, I i'm trying to spread the word and let people know about it and, and bring up the issues that you're bringing bringing up tonight i mean about other alternatives i i'm always careful i mean this is i think overall a globally and environmentally good thing uh, in my opinion, this is my opinion, personal. Um, so I, you know, I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good either. I mean, I, I, there may be better ways to do it, um, but if there's this kind of money available to take that amount of carbon out of the out of the atmosphere for the good of the globe and the human race, you know, I think you know you got to weigh everything. So, um, but these are these are good conversations to have with with you. So I appreciate everybody being here. Yeah, and and we'll have a recording of this so people can can check in it's not absolutely uh and things are going to be changing so what we know today is not what we will know in five, five months say or six months because i i think this is ever changing but it's good yep. to get to be part of um to try to keep up with what's going on so mm -hmm. um yeah so in six months we'll look back and say hey we should have we should have been thinking <laughs> about this 
or that. Right. Uh, and so, Bill, I really appreciate you doing this, and um, and uh, good has come out of it, I think. And yeah. and uh, if we can solve some of Blake's problems, even better. So. Um, That's right. Besides, besides, besides me, could anybody outside of Northwest Indiana participate in the meeting hosted by the Indiana DNR to address some of our problems here in the Calumet area? I, I didn't, won't be commenting on that, uh, on anything in Illinois. They, they've got, a, they've got a lot of work to do in Indiana. Um, but there, you know, there are meetings. I'm sure there are meetings in Illinois, like that, um, um, on this issue. And um, but I'm I'm just not aware of them. But I'm sure there is. So um, keep asking around, Blake. And somebody's going to. You got you got a good following, Blake. Just uh, talk to your friends. I think some someone will. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're having an environmental jihad right now with our not 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 only with our water but also our air and land. Yeah. Well, and Terry, did you have another comment? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I think it's important too, and and I think uh, all of us are trying to figure this out. Uh, and and what we really need to do uh, is uh, you know. Is kind of create a citizens lobby because you know it's it's kind of up to us as citizens to go and try and educate our our town and city councils and county councils too uh, on this process because you know you, you get the one sided view of things uh, from BP and people are going to start buying in not understanding the whole concept of what's going on uh, and I, I think the county council would be uh, and Lake County would be friendly. Uh, and you know we have, and I, my experience in the past of going to uh, town and city councils on issues is it's it's an education process for them. Uh, so it's up to us to kind of educate them on, on the benefits and the and the downfalls of these different issues, so that they make sure they're on the right side of things before they uh, uh, BP Buffalo and BP and Nips go Buffalo everybody, and they they have they have a lot of weight uh, in Northwest Indiana. Nipsco and BP both. So we need to make sure they don't bamboozle everybody uh, and create a scenario that, uh, you know, that we all regret afterwards. And that's why it's so important that we go in the right direction uh, with this green hydrogen. And BP has the capability. That's what we can't let them off the hook on. This is not about just making money. It's about doing the right thing for the community and, and Mother Earth. There's only one Mother Earth. And if people don't wake up, our kids and grandkids are going to be in serious problems. And that's, that's evident if you just think about uh, what's going on now with the climate. You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, Northwest Indiana has all of a sudden become a pretty mild place to live in the wintertime. Where it used to be, it was pretty severe. So, I mean, there's, there's things happening. There. And, and we, need to, we need to get the message out there. Amen to that. Um, and, and along that line, you'll see... Not I don't know how many of you will watch the video of their presentation, but that was one of the questions we asked was, you know, what, you know, what is the downside to, other than the, obviously the safety issue we talked about with the pipeline. And, you know, he, he said, you know, the, the criticism is that it further, it, 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 it could serve to further, you know, cause us to further rely on fossil fuels. I mean, that we're not trying try to extend that, but then the counter argument to that is, well, but right now we could reduce our emissions and it's hard to reduce um, when we're already relying on gas and everything else. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's definitely a good discussion to have for sure. Yeah. What, what is the kind of the timeline on, on this? When, how long is it going to take just to. I, I think it's still pretty early on. I mean, I, last, last I saw anyone online, they're still doing like subsurface exploration down in the counties, uh, south of us. So, um, but, you know, I think the federal money, I, I believe it's been awarded already. So I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what the timeline is. The federal money has been awarded, but it, it doesn't it, it doesn't say they can't use green hydrogen. Okay? okay. And BP's pushing blue hydrogen. That's where you need that pipeline. Mm -hmm. They can eliminate that pipeline 
if they go with the renewable energy aspect of it. And, and, and then all you're dealing with is water vapor versus CO2. Now, which one would you rather deal with? Water vapor or CO2? You know, and, and to make blue hydrogen, you need the pipeline, otherwise it's gray hydrogen. So they're going to do whatever they can do to make money because they don't care about the people. They've proven that over and over again, both BP and NIPSCO. If you look at NIPSCO's history on coal ash and what they've done, they've, they've, they've poisoned the city of Pines, uh, those people, and then they, they were fighting that for years. They finally brought city water into them because they poisoned all the wells with coal ash. You know, and BP, look what they do on a regular basis as far as, you know, the only time we get any change is when they get sued and then EPA comes in and makes them do something. You know, they need to develop a partnership with the community and be a part of the community to get the best solutions to pollution. And this is what they're refusing to do unless somebody makes them. And it's usually with a lawsuit, which is sad. Yo, Terry, have you remember the time when Governor Mitch Daniels expanded the BP, the B, the B, the B, the B, the BP, the B, the BP, the B, the BP thing to Lake Michigan a long time ago? I don't remember any exact details, but IDM has always been a rubber stamp for industry polluting Lake Michigan. And it just needs to stop. We need to rethink things and we need to redo things to where. We're stopping the pollution at the source. And like I said, the water discharge is a, is a simple, you know, the, the, the industry could actually make money off of that uh, by, you know, putting in the technology to, to create drinking water at their establishment and sell it back to municipalities. That would be the most common sense thing to do instead of keep, you know, keep dumping pollutants in the lake. And then, we, you know, the, the uh, uh, water treatment plants suck that pollutants up, then they have to redo it. So we're, you know, we're, we're doubling the work and, 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 and doubling the problem. Hmm. Does anyone else have any, any thoughts for you? Well, you know, we recorded this and, uh, it'll be available, uh, on um, Ollie's website, and uh, I, I can't send it directly to um, uh, to anyone here that that uh, would want it a little bit earlier. But I, I, I do appreciate Bill and Terry for Phyllis filling us in with all of this information, and just we have to keep track of it, and we. And we have to keep up with it, and that in includes me. So I'm going to um, have to attend some of these meetings as well. So I just want to thank everyone. I just before um, we leave, I'd like to um, mention that next month's speaker will be Dr. Larry Mc McClellan, and he will. Um, update us on research of the Underground Railroad through Northern Illinois and, and now through Northwest Indiana and Southern Michigan. And that will be on Tuesday, February 6th. And um, i am uh, been uh, working with um, uh, Dr. McClellan for some time now uh, and he's got um, he just published his third book on, on the subject. And um, so you can learn a little bit more about that um, on February 6th. So I really appreciate everybody attending and, and, uh, and for your participation and interest. And um, we all have to just keep, keep up with what's going on um, on this. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see everybody uh, next month. Take All care. Right, thank you. Hey, All right, see you. We need to know how to get a hold of Mr. Emerson. Oh, let me uh, let me put my email address in the chat here, and feel free to reach out. All right.
right, that's me. Emerson at lakecountyin.org. Okay. Well, now I, now I can end this, right? If you copy that email address and, um, and thanks everybody. Let me stop the recording.